Hello everyone, welcome to the Start 11 Prediction Show. Liverpool versus Manchester United, top versus second. Titanic tussle looming. Uh, and what will Liverpool's side be for this game? Uh, you can let me know what you think it should be in the comments section underneath. I'm going to try and work it out myself. Um, but I'm going to start, as I tend to, with a little bit of uh, the known injury so far. I do this for two reasons. Uh, it's to remind everyone that Liverpool are not quite the power that we want them to be. Um, but also that... Um, exactly what my knowledge is at time of doing this show in case anything is updated between now and the show coming out right Virgil van Dijk we know we're not even going to put him on the board because we know and it's sad and it makes us feel sad but he's not available of course and also because you know he doesn't have a magnet on his back anymore Joe Gomez we know will still be out still no idea of the prognosis and the timeline for him as it stands although we start to see a couple more photos of him in and around the training centre Costa Shimikas unlikely to be involved in this game Joel Matip, big question mark. We'd started to hear some mutterings, some rumblings that he might might be available for this game, which, let's be honest, is the absolute ideal world scenario for Liverpool. And we all know this well, but I'll be discussing it a little bit later on in the show. Nabi Keita. Who knows? Could be fit. Probably won't be. Uh, and, of course, we're still waiting on an update uh, of a Diogo Jota as well. It's likely to be another couple of weeks before we can have the Portuguese available for us. Um, yeah, so that is disappointing. I'm just going to hold Virgil up there just for the sake of balance. Uh, but, yeah, that means that... Those guys are almost certainly to be injured. I could throw Jaden Jakiri up, really, couldn't I? Let's be perfectly honest, because as, as much as we know right now, when I'm filming this, he just came on and looked really good, got a couple of assists in the FA Cup. Um, he's just as likely to pick up anything between now and kickoff. But we're going to go on the assumption right now that none of these are available, although I will have a little chat about Joel Matip, so I'm going to just push him off to the side for the moment. So, what are Liverpool going to do? I'm going to... I'm going to go with two things. I'm going to go with the team that I think that I would like to see and the team that I think Jürgen Klopp will go with. Uh, and I can't quite remember which <laughs> order they come in until I put all the players out. I'm going to go with the team that I think Jürgen will go with and then we'll have a little bit of a chat around that. So in goal, barring complications, it should be Alison Becker. It will be Andy Robertson, a fullback. Fabinho, who is now our best centre-half available at the club. And I think, and it is a little bit of debate for you guys, I think Jordan Henderson will start centre-half alongside him and Trent Alexander-Arnold will, of course, come back in at right-back and that means the midfield could well look something like this. Thiago Alcantara, Jeannie Wijnaldum, Curtis Jones, we'll talk about that. Uh, over on the far side, Sadio Mane, and of course it would just be the front three as we would love to see. Sadio Mane, Roberto Firmino and Mohamed Salah. Now, what we've therefore got fit and available to us is a substitute bench that should consist of uh, Cueven Kelleher, we genuinely hope, because you know, I'm not even going to dive into the, the Adrian chat, but yeah, Milner, Nico Williams, um, we'll put Matt about the way for the moment, Reese Williams... Nat Phillips, because we're allowed nine subs, of course. Um, Takumi Minamino, Shaq, Big Div, and uh, Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, with, of course, a little consideration over the potential of Joel Matip. Now, I think that's the team Jürgen will go with. Is it the team that I would like us to play? I can make a strong case for this, because I think what you get with this side is you've got... I think Man United are a team that are going to allow us to have a lot of a lot of the ball, and they're still. And I think their their modus operandi will be to hit us on the counter attack. Now, Jordan Henderson of the three potential options. Once again, in, let's just say in the absence of Joe Matip, you're looking at um, Reese, you're looking at Nat Phillips, and Jordan Henderson. I think Jordan Henderson is the fastest of the three, which is something that we very much need to be aware of because okay. Even if Cavani starts centre forward, they're likely to be with what you know two from three of Rashford, Greenwood, and maybe what James. With with the, the news that it's likely that Martial is going to be out, they've got pace. Is the, is the point that I'm kind of making there? And what having Jordan Henderson does there, he's got a bit of recovery pace. Yes, he's lacking in the experience of playing centre half, which could be to our detriment, and it actually might to be our detriment. Might be to our detriment in midfield. 
but that does keep the door shut at the back. Having seen that against Southampton, I wonder whether that is a strong indication of in the big games, he considers it more important to have Jordan Henderson in there, which I know seems counterintuitive, of course, because we um, we played Reese Williams against Tottenham Hotspur, but also we were hampered in our midfield options in that game as well. I think we might have seen a bit more Henderson at the back if Thiago had been a bit more available. Um, so that was me thinking for that. But here's an alternative, because... What, what I like about this is you've got Thiago, and I think we've started to see some signs of him being this, being this um, third choice, almost holding mid behind Fabinho and, and Henderson. You've got Genie Wijnaldum doing Genie Wijnaldum things, and I think there's a big opportunity for someone like Curtis Jones to shine. I don't think, look, you could just easily, just as easily put Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain in there, but I'm not sure he's... I don't know. I'm, I'm unsure on Ox. I think he's fantastic, and I don't. And this is not a dig at him in, in his ability levels in any way, shape, or form. But I'm just I quite like the idea of Kurt Jones coming into a big game, a big. It's not a derby, but you know, you know what I mean. Um, he's had a, he's, his form's dipped a little bit since he was obviously uh, played a role in, in West Brom in the West Brom and dropping points against West Brom. I think he's ready to come back, and he should be a little bit fired up for this one because I quite like that notion. But anyway, what I would, what I. I think we should do, and we would we would do discussing this on the build-up show. Fuck it, <laughs> Reese Williams in there, and go with Jordan Henderson in midfield, because we've lacked centrally, and I think there's something here for a start. That is an incredibly fluid midfield three. So there's a situation that can develop where actually Thiago can push up on up here and Genie can step in when and if Jordan Henderson's going out wide right to suit to suit and to sort Mohamed Salah and Trent. Our right hand side functions so much better, I think, with Jordan Henderson in that team. Um, and the left hand side of our team functions wonderfully with Robertson, Wijnald and Mane. I think that's the best version of our midfield that we can put out at the moment. Ideally, I still think you would have Fabinho in there and I think Thiago would move up into Wijnaldum's position in an absolute perfect ideal world. But I think with this approach, you've got your best front three, you've got your best possible, possible midfield and I think you're taking a hit on Reese Williams. That's a, he is a Big concern, a big concern. Make no mistake, I think he's a good. I think he's a good footballer, but he is. He he's the, he is the weak link in the chain. I think when you put Jordan Henderson in there, I think, I think you soften that a little bit. But I do think it, it has a a knock on effect to the rest of it. And we're at home. It's a big game, and there's a big opportunity to send a message to the league. It says that Liverpool aren't dead. Liverpool aren't better than Man United, and not as good as we think. Think back to the Leicester away game last season, coming back from the Club World Cup. Think back to statement wins that we've had, and we've had a couple of them this season. Even the Tottenham Hotspur game to some extent, but Arsenal, Chelsea along along the way. Um, the, the Leicester game again. You've got a chance, Wolves as well. Yeah, sort of. You've got a chance, I think, to get into Manchester United. I want us to go win and I want us to go and win well. Liverpool have got to assert their dominance here and I don't think we can do that with Jordan Henderson at centre-half. This side needs Jordan Henderson at its heart and he cannot do the things that he is best at doing from this position because if you need someone to grab a game by the scruff of the neck, it's, uh, that Jordan Henderson is your man. It's mad how it's happened, but this team is built in Jordan Henderson's image. It's built on his heart and it's built on his gumption. It's built on his talent as well, to be fair. Um, so that's what I would go with. So is it the team that I think Liverpool will go with? No, I, I, I don't. I think we will be slightly more conservative, at least to, to, you know, to, to start the game off. I think we've got the ability to go a bit more attacking if we need to, but I do think Klopp likes to show respect in these games. And as much as I'm making it sound like Liverpool are totally undone by having this at, at centre-half, that's a fantastic midfield. I think that's, a be that's still a better midfield than what Man United's best midfield is. Or at least it's damn, it's damn close. Um, we'll still be on top and then be from underneath, you understand. What Henderson at centre half allows you to do, we've not really been able to see this yet, is what we've lost and what you lose with Reese Williams and what you lose with Nat Phillips at the back is Liverpool's distribution from the back. Fabinho can do it, Henderson can do it. And what, what Gomez, Gomez can do this, Matip can do it, and Virgil van Dijk is the absolute prime example of being able to do it, is you're defending and it's quick transitions. It's pinging balls from here 
into here and into here and getting Mane on the front foot, getting Salah on the front foot, having proper, comfortable ball playing, you know, cultured centre halves gives us that platform. <sighs> So I could understand this team. It's not the team I would necessarily go for, but I could understand uh, if Jürgen were to go for it. And as I say, the only, the absolute ideal world scenario for Liverpool at the moment, because we're not getting Van Dijk and Gomez back anytime soon, I think with the players who are likely to be fit, when we get the players who are likely to be available, as in ones who aren't out for se- out for the rest of the season, if it, I think that is, I think that with Matip at the back is Liverpool's best team right now. With maybe a case that you could, there might be a case where you throw Diogo Jota in there at some point down the line. But so if Matip's fit for me, it's a no-brainer. Get him in the side. Fingers crossed that he is available because I think we will be much better for that. Everything else feels like a little bit of a compromise otherwise. Um, but no. That is the team I think Jürgen will go for. Is it good enough to beat Manchester United? What do you think? Let me know in the comments section underneath. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like on it. And if you haven't yet, uh, don't uh, either check out at 7.30pm on Thursday, uh, Mark Goldbridge live Q&A on the channel with Chris Pajak. Or if you didn't see it, check it out after the fact. Uh, the build-up show as well will be here. And I'll be back with a watch-along uh, with Chris doing a commentary for the match on Sunday for the game as well. So do come and check that out on the channel. Click the notification bell once you subscribe to make sure you are notified when it happens. Other than that, up the Reds, have an amazing couple of days and hopefully uh, see the Reds smash the Manx and go back to the top of the Premier League. Thank you so much for watching the Redmen TV YouTube channel. Everything we do here is funded by our wonderful subscribers to theredmentv.com. Get over there, sign up and get amazing additional content, interviews, documentaries, mini-series and of course additional pre and post match day content.